Hello friends. So Janet reached out to me to see if I wanted to do a layout for the six by six series that she has going on. Uh, it's working with a class from scrapbook generations, which I do have. Uh, and you could either take a sketch from there, she said, or you can just download a free one. And I thought I would download a free one. So I downloaded the January 15, 2016 sketch. It's right here. And I'll go ahead and put it right here while I'm crafting to show you what I have going on. Now, look at how cool it is. We have these little pieces here, little pieces here. And when I'm looking at it, I'm like, this is from 2016. And I would pin it today. Like, how great is that? That it's not like the newest sketch design, the newest style, but it is so incredibly current. That is fantastic. So that's going to be my sketch. The six by six, which is not a six by six, my six by six, six by eight paper pad is going to be this new one from Coco Vanilla Studio, the unforgettable stack. And let's see, I haven't used it at all. So I still have 30 sheets here. This is from my Mind the Scrap um, Kit Club. So I have all of these beyond fabulous, gorgeous, wonderful, fabulous, can I say it again, pattern papers. So pretty. So now the funny thing is six by six, six by eight, it's still the same thing. Let's use up those little pads, all of them that we had to have. It is so great if you get the class and it was a download. And there's so much information and so many ideas and you can use it in so many different ways. So take a look at it. Janet explains all about it in her video. So I'm going to use this and I'm going to use the rest of my How to Kill a Kit with Style kit. Now, also for this month, um, one of my biggest concentration is rub-ons. So I'm going to try to get some rub-ons in there. And this is the set I'm trying to work through right now. These are vintage, beyond vintage, super vintage and they still work. So I'm going to try to get rub-ons in. I'm going to use this pad. Oh, and the photo I'm using, my husband went out of town for work and this is the hubby and he's staying in this really, really nice hotel that his company put him in. He has to take a class. It's just like a day he flies in, flies out, whatever. But in the lobby, there are these gorgeous swans and their names are George and Martha and they live in there. They hang out. They've got their little nest area. And he uh, sent a Snapchat video to me about them. I'm like, um, could you just go get some selfies with George and Martha? He's like, I'm going to look so weird. I'm like, yeah, I don't care. So he was kind enough to get selfies with George and Martha for me. And by the way, George and Martha was my very, very, very favorite series. Ooh, let me get that glare out of there. Series when I was a kid of books. So George and Martha, The Swans gorgeous cocoa vanilla stuff. Going to get some of these rub-ons in, use this sketch, and that's it. All right, I'm going to fast forward the next bit because you know that I hem and haw a bit when I'm crafting, and I have a brand new kit. This is the first layout I'm going to be doing with this kit. So with that in mind, it's going to take me an extra minute to figure out what's what. Okay, here we go. Wish me luck. Okay, friends, so I went through and just picked out a few of the pattern papers that were catching my eye. Now that's the cool thing about having a, pater, a patterned paper pad is that you can really just kind of, what do I like? What am I feeling? What kind of matches this? And we all know that you can pretty much scrapbook any situation with a given collection. So this large floral piece I have right here is from Coco Vanilla as well. You saw that I was using the... Uh, my How to Kill a Kit with Style Kit, which happens to be a Mind the Scrap Kit. It's all the same thing this month with, with the addition of a bunch of add-ons. But you can look at that on my How to Kill a Kit with Style. Um, I did a kit reveal a little while back. So both of these are Coco Vanilla that you see here, and they're gorgeous. I mean, you get the rich watercolor floral kind of thing, and then my beloved wood grain. I love wood grain. And you see in the sketch right there that there's kind of a border around the sketch. So that's really going, that was what made me think to do this right away is like, okay, yeah, I want to get that border in there too. So let's just go for it. So now hopefully this 
what would it be? 11 and a half by 11 and a half will cooperate and go on to my border paper without too much muss or fuss. I found that if I only put adhesive on one side of the paper, I have a much better chance of it working out. And the reason why is the adhesive, if I put it on all four sides, tends to keep grabbing everywhere and I don't have enough wiggle room. So I have to work within my boundaries of having a little bit of an ATG fight on my hands. Now you see in the sketch that we have up there, the photos are going kind of more of a three by four and mine are going more of a four by three. And that is absolutely fine. You are the boss of your sketch. And for the most part, if you can get inspiration from your sketch, that is really the bee's knees. So I went ahead and I'm cutting my papers at six inch pieces because this is supposed to be a six inch, uh, six by six paper pad kind of tutorial. And they also happen to work for my photos perfectly fine. I did three of the floral and one each of the solid-ish papers. I mean, neither are solid, they're watercolory. And I think it looks so pretty against the wood grain. Doesn't everything look pretty against wood grain? And I'm going ahead and making sure to line up my, my little uh, strips here using my T-square ruler. I have just regular uh, tape from Tape Jungle, I believe, in my ATG gun. I buy it kind of by whatever the case size is that you can buy. So I only have to buy it a couple times a year. And I'm getting my little strips on. And what else can I tell you? I can tell you that this came together rather quickly because I had a fab sketch to work from. And I have the most beautiful set of papers. So far, everything's cocoa vanilla, so maybe it'll stay that way. Now you see in the upper right part of the sketch, there's a few different little pieces um, to make another little cluster. So I went ahead and grabbed the same uh, three sheets that I had used previously to make my large photo cluster area, and I'm gonna go ahead and repeat those uh, strips. I'm going to also go ahead now and use the backside of a couple of these gorgeous pattern papers. I know it's practically a crime to do my uh, 12 by, I'm sorry, to go ahead and map my photos. I have been getting a lot more of my paper used, a lot more of my scraps by doing this. So it's something that works for me. If it doesn't work for you, please just go into your scrap bin and grab some white, black, whatever and go ahead and mat your photos. But I have been enjoying doing it this way. And uh, yeah, and as previously noted, we are the boss of our scrapbooking products. It's probably the one place in the whole world that we are the true boss. So the, now it is title time. I have these gorgeous, kind of shiny, puffy alphas, as well as some tile uh, letters that I can work from in this kit. And now this, I, it looks gold, but it's actually a bit of a bronzy gold. I really like them. The thing that I do not like is that I need like eight more sets of them, and I only have one set. So hopefully next year, Tuesday morning, will be kind enough to get more in for me. We'll see how that goes. So these are just some little pebbles, uh, tile alphas. They are aqua with a really deep magenta lettering. And yeah, I've gotten some use out of them, surprisingly enough. The owner of Mind the Scrap is quite clever in what she chooses, so yes, clearly these are going together beautifully. I have told you that I wanted to really concentrate and doing my best on using rub-ons this month, and are actually for the foreseeable future, so I'm going ahead and using some of these ancient Kaiser Craft ones. They look kind of like little sewing stitches, and that's kind of mimicking, you see kind of the strips of the stars and different little elements that are in that sketch. So that is doing a nice job with adding just another bit of a textural element within all of these textural papers. Uh, the photo of my husband, I did go ahead and elect to pop that one up on some fun foam. It's the adhesive kind of fun foam, the kind I prefer to use. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off a couple different places of using those little rub-ons. I believe I'm going to go ahead and put some as well on that little cluster of paper strips that is on the upper right of this layout. 
Now you might notice that the strips aren't all going all the way up to the top of the uh, the border paper because I figured I would go ahead and put some kind of die cut or something there to make up the difference. I wanted them at staggering lengths, kind of like how the uh, photo cluster paper area is staggered. Okay, so that's going to be pretty much the, the base of my layout. I want to figure out where my photos can go and where I can go ahead and put this title since my title is a large element with it. But it's also, aside from being a large element, it is being uh, my journaling because this wasn't a huge momentous event. It's just a fun event. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get this title on and I won't make you watch the whole thing since it does appear to be painstaking. So let's get that on. All right, title is on. Now I've gone through and put the two different types of uh, die cuts ephemera into these little six by four photo boxes just while I am using them in this kit. I like to be able to rifle through all my little goodies and I do a lot better if something's wide open and I can see them. Even if I'm crafting in a different area on the layout, it's like your eye keeps catching something and say, yeah, I can use that or I can use this other piece. So I am an absolute visual scrapbooker. There is no way around it. Now I like this really large uh, kind of viney circle shape. I'm going to put that up and it's going to be another anchor point for my photos and my ever-present T-square ruler. You see that I went ahead and put foam, like Frankenstein, some foam tape on the back of the picture of the hubs. I will use itty bitty bits and pieces just so I don't waste anything as I go along with the foam stuff. I think it works great though. Now here you see me going ahead and auditioning a couple of die cuts in my top cluster. I knew I wanted to fill that in a little bit more and look at this ridiculously gorgeous little camera piece. It is, oh my gosh, if they gave us 10 of those, it would not be enough. They're so pretty, the little watercolor camera. And there's a great little tab piece for me to fill out more of my photo cluster. And look at these little tickets. They're in this great orchid color. Now, did tickets have anything to do with this? Absolutely not. Do I care? Absolutely not. Now, in this kit, there's also these great little feather pieces, which I thought was ever so fortuitous because, of course, our swans have feathers. And, yeah, it makes sense when, you know, you'll, like, I, I really didn't even know that much about what was in this kit. I just knew it was gorgeous. And my husband's just wearing one color and we have white swans. So I knew that I could make it with just about anything, but how kind of them, meaning meaning cocoa vanilla to include these little feather pieces in. So I'm gonna make that a strong part of my title. I thought that it was a giant win, so that is part of my title. And I did go ahead and pop up the teal color, the turquoise teal, whatever you wanna call it, of that uh, little feather cluster I put there. I'm also gonna go ahead and on this little ticket cluster that you see me Putting right there, I'm going to go ahead and just pop one of them up as well, just so I have a little bit of a dimensional thing going on. You're getting a bit of a glare off the little swan on the left. I am sorry about that, but you know, yeah, see, there's a little swan. It's like his little head's tucked in. I don't know if he's sleeping or if he's having, he, she, I don't know, is having a bit of a bath, but they were so cute. And I think it's clever that they call them George and Martha. You know, somebody in that hotel yeah, had the same reading joy that I had as a child. Okay, so I'm adding the little tickets in different little places, sticking them here and there, and kind of loving them. So I did cut that uh, gray taupe little ticket up into two places, added them in the top right cluster and in the giant cluster that is on the bottom. Now you can see that the sketch is a little bit calmer than my layout. I am a more is more is more kind of girl, so I have a lot going on. I do love when I start at the beginning of a kit because you know, your clusters can be so full and you can learn a lot about the product that you're working with. So the subsequent layouts you do with it kind of just zip along ever so nicely. So these are Coco Vanilla, they're foam and they're gorgeous because they really go on there so easily. 
and I used three of the black foam hearts. I have some black elements on this uh, layout, so the little foam hearts went in ever so nicely, and they give us another texture as well. I'm making sure to use smaller ones of, of that collection, though. Now, I also have some Vicky Booten something in honey hmm. in this as well as Paige Evans. See right there. That's the Vicky Booten uh, sticker sheet. And then I have these gorgeous ones right here. These thickers are stunning. I think they're Paige Evans. I And uh, yeah, just brand new. I haven't used a thing on it, but... They are gorgeous and I believe they are chipboard. Mm -hmm. I can go ahead and use a little bit of the hearts from it, which is, it's also like kind of watercolory that heart. So it really did go so well with this layout. Mm -hmm. And I have hearts and happy little things all over it. So, you know, it's my husband, we can have hearts on it. All right, I'm using just a little bit of liquid adhesive on this piece here. It is, I think it's a chipboard piece as well. and. Sometimes the chipboard just doesn't want to stick, so you have to give it just a little extra love. I was putting my uh, my six by eight papers are all being kept in a little freckle fawn pouch while I make this, just so I don't have to keep clipping them repeatedly and all that kind of stuff. Now, when I go ahead and disperse my kit or put it away a little bit, I'll probably go back to putting one of those bulldog, you know, those big clips on. On it. Uh, sorry that you hear Mason snoring away in the background. It's part of the charm of when I do a voiceover that the pups are ever so loud. So I'm seeing where I want to put any of these Dear Lizzie little enamel shape pieces. It's giving us a little bit of shine on the layout and I mean it's not as if this layout doesn't have a ton on it. So right there I have my little gray marker. I was like do, do I want to go ahead and put any kind of uh, journaling on it? And I really don't need to. It's just a selfie with George and Martha and cute little bits and all that. So if you'd like to go ahead and uh, ask any questions, go ahead and leave them below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And thanks so much for watching, friends. See you soon. Bye-bye.